Hear that? Kind of cool, huh? Something new happening here. We got a really cool live ITL for you. We got a lot of updates. Let's get to it. You're at the place, Pensado's place. I'm shuffling, 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 shuffling. Come on, laugh, her. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we missed you guys last week. I uh, hope, uh, hope you were still entertained. It was, I, I actually thought the show was good. I watched it. it it's, um, it's fun to see, see the old guys, mm -hmm. old shows, you know, re, re resurrected. I'm not but, sure they know what was going on next week. They don't know we've changed studios. Oh, and last week we didn't have a studio. Yeah, so. yeah. Steven Spielberg picked us up for a new NBC show, so we're in the new studios for that today. And it's called Lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering our age, it could have been Jurassic Park. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you got a lot to talk about today. What you got for us? I do. Uh, to it. Um, we've got, obviously, we want to say hello to our Vintage King family, our chat room has got Jason Schneider in there and uh, okay. there's Jason's page oh, cool. uh, and obviously Manning our chat room is the uh, ever present he's not the DJ he's the CJ and somebody asked me what CJ meant which means chat jockey so see the pointing man Drew Adams what up y'all <laughs> Hopefully you all had, we didn't alert you to put on your 3D glasses for that one. We'll do that, we'll do that next. Um, why don't we get to lots of the information that we have right away. You already know where to meet uh, to, to get to us. So, you know, Facebook and Twitter is a way to, to contact us as well as um, uh, our YouTube page, which is there. Um, let's do a bunch of updates. So, coming back, we've got, we want to thank you a lot for the action at the website. Uh, PensadosPlace.tv, getting a lot of information from you there. I love our website. That's, that, and our website's going to grow. So we are absolutely crazed with stuff. Stay tuned. But, but we love the information. We're talking to you there. Thanks a lot for the mix inquiries. I'm in conversations with lots of you for Dave's services. That's fantastic. Uh, quick updates on MixFest. First and foremost, thank you for the crazy response. It's mm. been insane. Um, our idea was to have an L.A.-based event, work through it. And literally, we have people flying in from New York, Detroit, Puerto Rico, Australia, obviously all Portugal. around Southern California, Portugal, all around Southern California. We're humbled. You see up on the screen, you can see that information. Um, we, we, are, we are absolutely humbled. We've got uh, a couple questions that you've asked that are pretty important. Um, one is, there won't be a physical ticket. When you get to the event, your name will be on a list, you'll check, we'll check in, we'll check you off, and, and you'll go in that way. As to our students, um, make sure that you, you know, say your name, what student group you're from, and it could be student groups. We have an incredible student group called Pensado Students, who came up with the coolest flag with Dave's face oh, on it. Funny. We'll show you that at some point in time. I love that. Um, AVID has a student Facebook group. Um, there's all kinds of schools in the Southern California area that we want to make sure are there. And, and a lot of you are coming. Art Institute, USC, UCLA, Loyola, SAE, uh, on and on and on and on. Uh, those are for the students. So you'll just mention it once you get your ticket. Um, another important thing. Uh, we have got several requests from people who want the USB key, the interactive feature we're going to do, and or the gift bag but can't be here. We will accommodate that, but here's what you have to do. Be really specific. You'll go to our website. We'll need you to provide the shipping information. If you provide the shipping information and how, we will fulfill that for you for those people who want it. How do you get that to us? Go to our website, pensadosplace.tv, and look at the contact information there. And in the subject line, put USB shipping. We're going to pay attention to those. We'll get those fulfilled. So to our website, pensadosplace.tv, get to contact information, hit us by email, not by Twitter, hit us by email, and put in the, put in the subject uh, line, USB shipping. Um, God, there's so much stuff. Um, clearly the event, I, we've been graced by great guests. So Dave's gonna do his thing, we're gonna do our thing, we're gonna be giving away lots of stuff. 
Jean-Marie Horvat is going to do this really cool logic session. We love Jean-Marie. He's a great guy. Um, we landed a one, just Eric Valentine, one of our most favorite and requested oh, I guests. I million questions for Eric. I don't know if anybody else is going to get to ask <laughs> exactly, any. Exactly. I've got to find out about the drumbrella and the mic stand. Exactly. Um, he's got a new board out now. So he's going to be part of our Q&A. We're going to have a lot of fun. Drew's going to be running around doing stuff. Um, so, and we're about to wrap it up. So we want to thank our incredible, incredible sponsors who are making things available to give away, like Inbox Pros and copies of Pro Tools, and uh, we're going to have plugins that we're giving away and all kinds of stuff. Your gift bags are going to be full of discounts. We want to make sure you walk out of there with some value beyond the learning that's going to happen. It's going to be a lot of teaching, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, another question. We will have an online version of this coming. We're not doing it yet because we want to make sure we do it right. So for this first one is in L.A. We're coming to you. We have some ideas in the hopper. And, and then just in wrapping up this homework part, we want to thank all of our incredible family and sponsors for this. They've been absolutely incredible. Um, our Vintage King family, Chevy and the boys, um, the Go Get Em crew at Avid, Anthony and G.I. and, and Alex, Colin and Ralph at McDSP, Maureen and, and uh, Destin at Neris, um, and then our incredible hosts, uh, which is the Los Angeles Recording School. Um, I love that theater. Cecilia and uh, Colleen have been um, just incredible. And um, I mean, Candace and Cecilia, duh, too many names. Uh, Candace Kohler and Cecilia Berry over there have been incredible. The, the event is at the Los Angeles Recording School in their main theater. Uh, I'd, we start at 11. I'd say get there 10 ish, 10 30. There'll be stuff in the lobby for you to do and sample. Mm -hmm. And that's all the information. <laughs> you know, if, I, if I've got a second. You do. One of the things I'm most excited about, <clears throat> about um, this is it, we're ending the QVC moment of the uh, show. <laughs> fish just, uh, that was a great, that fit, you remember her went fish on us with the dice and slice thing with all that stuff. But guys, this really is a cool thing and we're doing it for you. We're, not, we're I, I keep getting frustrated that I, I run out of time to explain things to you. So this is going to give me uh, her, close your ears, her. But this is going to give me all the time I need to really get into in-depth explanations of some of the concepts of mixing that you guys keep asking. That I, 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 uh, I've got carpal tunnel syndrome trying to answer some of your questions. Like, stop asking me what the meaning of life is. I can't ask your questions that long. But this is going to give us an opportunity to really get into depth and get and get you experienced at at the concepts that 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 we use to take your mixing to the next level. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about being able to do that because yeah, yeah. it gets so frustrating not being able to really fully yeah. expand on some of those things. And this is first of many, the interactive thing, which it's an idea Will came up with, I think is going to be think really cool. Genius. So, um, you know, we got such a cool guest, we want to get to it. Listen, mm -hmm. I just want to say this to you. Um, you're getting an award in a couple of weeks, which I want you to bring to the show. Um, some military audio students are giving awards in different content spaces, and you're getting one. So, congrats. The GQ Man of the Year? Well, GQ stands for something different, not Gentleman's Quarterly. It's something I can't say here. So, uh, so, con <laughs> so congrats. Let's get to Brent. So, congratulations to you on that. And then I have to give a graduation speech, actually, on Friday at the end of this week for, for uh, a, a hallowed institution. That's cool, huh? so, so, cool to all of us. And thank you for the support. Stuff is going nuts. We have lots of stuff to share with you. And we have a cool as hell guest and a cool as hell ITL. Why don't you? Why don't Guys, you I want you to, uh, in a second, you're going to meet Brent Paschke. Brent has been a friend of mine for quite a while and someone I've admired uh, and known about since the early 2000s when his band uh, Spy Mob was on uh, Epic Records. And uh, in incredible talent, uh, incredible person. Uh, he's played on all your favorite records. He's been with Pharrell. Uh, Chad, the Neptunes, and NERD for 10 years. Probably 95% of the guitar work you hear on, on NERD or the Neptunes or Chad and Pharrell is, is Brent. Brent, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Thank thanks you, guys. Thanks for coming, man. Appreciate it. So don't don't be offended if I ask you to play every riff oh, from man. every nerve. <laughs> if I remember all of them, too, right? Okay, good. Yeah, cool. So Brent uh, uh, very graciously decided to or not decided, but uh, agreed to, to do an, an ITL for us. And because of the limitations of, of having to get in, in a new space and everything, we didn't film it. We're going to kind of do this one kind of live with Brent. Brent's going to um, 
uh, is also a producer. He's a writer, incredible <coughs> gifted guitar player. He's played live in front of hundreds of thousands of people. He's, he's open for Bowie and everybody. But he's going to today show us some techniques on, on, on how producers that aren't guitar players can approach recording yeah. good guitar sounds. Yeah. Which, which is a, a public service to me because I have to mix these sounds. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I told you, Dave, you know, I think um, it, it's obviously, it's from the ground up. It's just like mm. you're recording a vocal or whatever. It's like you, your basic chain, your first, your first thing, if your microphone's not good, it's not good, you mm -hmm. know? So, mm -hmm. um, but I think where uh, a lot of people, that's where a lot of people miss out on guitars these days. You hear a lot of purists say, I won't use a, I'm a purist, so I'm down being like 57 telly, you know, and I have like boutique hand-wired amps and whatnot. Um, but if you got the right stuff in front of it, you can make the plugins work these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the plugins are the sound of radio these days. Mm -hmm. So if I have to, if I go in and play on with, I did Katy Perry with Tricky, you mm -hmm. know, I'm gonna first go. I brought amps because Tricky wants the options. You know, that's how Tricky is. Um, but I'm like, listen, I think we should go with the, the plugins. That's the sound. That's that's what we're hearing on radio. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. You know, and on top of that, they sound great. Um, so it's, it's really basics of it. I think that sometimes I hear people bring stuff from my studio, it's an amp recorded, but it's not a good amp and it's not a good mm. guitar. And it's all, like, the, it's all in the right hand anyway. Yeah, and it's, it's, that, it's that too. What's your, anyway. your go-to plug-in for, um, for most sin, sin situations? Definitely 11 by DigiDesign. I, I, like, I like knowing that I can open it up and, and see that it's a Marshall Plexi. Oh, that's the sound I want. I, you know, I, I, so I really like that. I'm gonna now, stop you, and this is important. A lot of you guys remember Shorty's a 10, which is a, a, a track Short, and a, a Shorty's a weirdo. Yeah. Uh, the dream song, Shorty's a 10. I, I just finished Dream. Shorty's a weirdo, the song that we used for several of our ITLs. That was Brent that, uh, yeah. that wrote, produced, and was playing it. So um, that was an 11 amp. That was that. an 11 too. And part of the reason, part of the reason that's an 11 amp too is I don't know when we went in and wrote and wrote that song. I wrote that with Amit Oliver and Shy Carter. And when we were writing that, it was in a jam session. You know, you're, you know, you're just you're jamming it, and it, and Pro Tools is running. So I can't have an amp in another. I don't have that facility to have an amp in another room mic'd up. And I don't know if the song's going to change keys down the road. But I like this. It, you know what I mean? It's just so much easier to plug the guitar back in and punch in a quick chord that I wanted to change, and, and you know. So it makes it easier. And the but the sound was great, and I'm a sounds I'm a, great, right? You know, I'm a humbuck humbuckers through a plexi Marshall. And yeah, it still sounded great to me. Yeah, and that's like you know that's the right combination. That was like uh, I think that was sixty my sixty four Strat through just di'd into I can't remember which amp setting it was there, but you know as long as you kind of got those basic front ends right, you're good. I noticed you recorded it, so I couldn't steal the preset. Too. <laughs> Yeah, but. Well, probably not screw it up as well. He probably yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of times I will I will print a lot of times. I think I did give you a, I might have given you an extra on that. Yeah, I think we did because you did. Yeah, you did. But uh, but a lot of times I will print those. You know, even you know. But I will so sometimes say put a note, leave you know, duplicate the playlist and leave another playlist inactive, saying like the dry signal, just in case somebody wants to really so, so, know, try something so, different. So what is the top? The top, rather go from a negative and say the top mistake most people make. What's what's the first thing people should think about when they're trying to get a guitar into into a DAW? I think nowadays um, a great DI. Honestly, I mm -hmm. I I notice an ex a, a massive difference uh, recording in. I have a I have a um, Great River, you know, um, and it's just got the most incredible DI. And I swear when I Try to record in other DIs. It's just not the and same. And is, is it's just, way, way under. Yeah, and it's just such an incredible DI that 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 makes all the difference. If I take this in, that DI and 11 plug, you'll swear. Like, and you heard it. Like, you swear. It's like well, I I could trick people that that's you know. Okay, not so we got the guitar. We're getting the DI. Yeah. And then do you audition a bunch of presets in 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 11, or do you go straight for one or two? You know. You usually usually I'll kind of know. You know. Um, if it's, uh, you know, if it's NERD, you know, I'll, I'll know, like, there I'm kind of doing interesting 
we're we're being really on the creative side. If it's like something where it's like pop radio, mm -hmm. I might stick with the default on Drew song for, that I just finished last night. The, that they'll have at the mix thing. Mm -hmm. um, I went with the straight default. I don't think I even changed on, on anything. The new, on the new Katy Perry album, you, you did several songs on that. Was that all yeah. eleven? That was all eleven. Yeah. What, what, pre what preset? I can't remember. We could ask Tricky. We could ask those guys. <laughs> yeah. you, you buying that, Drew? Yeah, not at all. You, drive, you buying that, Herb? I wouldn't know what to buy. <laughs> he should use a twizzle for it. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that was, that, was, that was direct. Yeah, I ended up bringing amps, but that was direct, and, and I brought a handful of guitars and stuff like that. Wow. So, one thing, though, one thing I will say that's a little secret, I think it, a lot of people do go in, like, with... 15 guitars and they're trying all these different guitars honestly you get like a couple that sound really good mm -hmm. like i honestly don't even have i'm always borrowing guitars from my buddies to go do sessions if i if i have to have a bunch of guitars because i typically walk into i'll go to rodney's all the time with two electrics mm -hmm. a les paul rodney jerkins my, yeah and mm -hmm. my strap mm -hmm. and it's it's fine it works mostly it works because they're just really good guitars mm -hmm. as long as it's a great guitar i don't have to fight with the source if the mm. source is great it's you're, you're good sonically can you hear the difference between a, a, a 59 telly and a and a and a 2011 squire after it goes through the whole chain yeah i i, I think so i mean i know the, i know the feel and, and <coughs> intonation and all that's definitely better but it just yeah i mean there's something you know look there's a lot of good new guitars i'm kind of a vintage snob i like my old guitars and and they feel different when you play them. Yeah, like they, they just they they react a certain way. You can tell a guitar that was played <coughs> by an idiot. I swear you can, right? They yeah, like, you I can swear. pick up a guitar, Herb. Mm -hmm. People laugh at, at at us guitar players, but you can pick up a guitar that's been played by somebody great, mm -hmm. and it and it, and you can feel it. Just mm -hmm. you hit you hit like just half a note, and yeah. and you can play, pick up a guitar that's played by somebody that doesn't know how to play, and it just feels icky. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I swear. Yeah. It's not the way it's set up. It's just something about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. the way it resonated all yeah. those years of yeah. somebody who's hitting it. Goes right. to I don't 11. know what it is, man. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so now in terms of compressing mm -hmm. the guitar, do you do that before you it goes into the into the no. plug in or you, you use compression in the plug in or after the plug in? I don't. I will I, I DI in my setup at the studio. My my setup at my studio is very efficient, you know, because I'm writing and producing and running, so my brain is going back and forth. So it's literally like DI in, and then it's it's my chain is always going through my distressor and then into there. Okay. But for guitar, it's always on bypass. I don't buy. I don't add compression before. If I add compression before, I'll go to like an orange squeeze, like an old school like mm. compressor. Mm. Um, Waves has some nice pedal, like the little guitar yeah, rack I, stuff. I, I use that for vocals a lot. Yeah, too. they have some nice stuff, so I'll go to maybe the Waves compressor. I'll maybe do that. Um, but yeah, I don't. I think they modeled an orange squeezer. I have to they, ask. They a lot might. It sounds. Sure it sounds like. It sounds that. like it. Yeah, doesn't. it does. Um, By the way, here, an orange squeezer is this little amp that came out in the '70s. <clears> it's it's. It's just a square piece of aluminum about this big with a plug on it, and, and it's not a pedal. You just plug it into your guitar and then plug your cord into the other side. It's oh, the ugliest right? thing you ever saw. Yeah. But it, we laughed at it when we first saw them when they came out. But God, they just it there's no weird. knobs. Wow, no joke. <laughs> no, it's just in and out. And you know how I love knobs, yeah, exactly. so you know this thing must really be good <laughs> right, right, if, I, if I like yeah. it with no That's knobs. For sure. yep, That's yep. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't do. I don't use compression going in unless I want that pedal compression. It affects sound. the way you play. Yeah, yeah, and unless I want that pedal compression, I don't use it. Mm. So, okay. Yeah, and and when you add effects, oh, by the way, guys, uh, Brent has graciously agreed to tell us his go-to choices for um, different. Um, Effects, so you're going to get uh, in batter's box. You can get a breakdown of that. But as far as the effects, do you tend to use the effects within uh, the, the 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 guitar plug in, or do you use outboard? Or do you do mixture or combination? Combination, yeah. More and more, more and more effects inside. You know, um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, uh, so I do have a, a grip of like, you know, back in the day I went through that phase where every time ZVEX came out with their pedal, I was, I love I was the 300, ZVEX, 300, $400 yeah. out of pocket. You Dylan, know? Dylan Dresda's yeah. got every ZVEX uh, ever it's, made. It's the, he's I love one it of too. the best pedal makers. His yeah. distortion is incredible. The woolly, woolly mammoth. I have, yeah, I have serial number what, what's, three, the one, yeah. what's the one? Do you really? Yeah, I really do. <laughs> the one I've got that I use on... Damn near every song sequa. I use it on bass is the sequa. Yeah, like with the multiple multiple wah settings. Yeah, I got that. Every too. every every pedal is like hand painted or mm, mm, they, mm. they look like little graffiti pedals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My one of my one of my 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 NERD secret actually guitar tone wise is a Zvex pedal, is the Fuzz Factory. Before I went to do the NERD record. I, you know, when we got this call and we get this, we get the record, you know, before the band was on it, mm -hmm. in search of, I'm going like, okay, I, I'm going to make this interesting though. I'm not going to go in as a normal guitar player with normal distortion. Mm -hmm. So I use the Fuzz Factory. Wow. And the Fuzz Factory is that really weird, it'll, it, you can get it to like fall apart yeah. and it's got an odd fuzz face kind of distortion, yeah. but yeah. kind of not. And that's that whole sound that. I wonder. I wonder if anybody's going to model some of his stuff. Yeah. They try. I think Line Six tried to do the sequa, but I don't know if they. I, I don't know if it was too exact. I think that's kind of a hard. I don't know how you can model well, some well, of those. There, there's an art to circuit design, and he yeah. certainly understands he, that. He He's gets doing it. a lot of stuff that's just non-traditional in there. I've opened yeah. his stuff up, and it's just little pieces of artwork inside yeah. the artwork Yeah, and he scratches all already. the he scratches all the stuff off, yeah, so you, you can't can tell, tell what it is. <laughs> But still, it's just incredible stuff. Yeah. I just like looking at how people put their stuff together because, like, you look at um, at Mark over at BAE and like his soldering is like just it's just beautiful. You yeah. know, yeah. I, I, I guess it's kind of crazy to think a wiring is beautiful. But um, um, so like a like like let's let's just quickly break down a couple of types of sounds like a like a real clean R&B strat mm -hmm. straight through the board sound how how do you approach that in the box sometimes straight in like i, I don't mind that like doobie brothers like sometimes yeah, i'll yeah. i'll go with that just straight in uh -huh. you know um but i'll try to get era that's what i like about 11 is i try to get era specific you know what i mean mm. so Pharrell's very, you know, Pharrell will be like, he just explains sound. He has no idea if it's yeah. tweed or, you know, he has no idea. He just says, I want this sound. Mm -hmm. And I put it together. If he, you know, I want to mm -hmm. sound like the police. You know, then mm -hmm. Drew Coleman and I will sit and like make sure and study like what is that that they were doing, you know, sonically, because mm -hmm. that's, that's what P wants, you know, mm -hmm. so. And then, and then your go to like, um, like, not not an ACDC SG through a Marshall, but but like your more modern sound, like 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 an yeah. Eric Valentine kind of sound, like on like m more modern, like a lot of times. Well, because I mostly do so much more modern pop stuff. Mm -hmm. So again, I will I'll stick with. A lot of times, I might honestly go with the default eleven, the first one that comes up, and use it because. If it's if it's heavier stuff, because that's typically what the guys who don't really play would do, mm -hmm. is plug in and go, oh, that sounds great, let's record, and then it's on the radio. Now it's kind of in the conscious conscience of everybody mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to kind of stay with that line. You know what I mean? It's the yeah. same thing as vintage stuff. I'll go vintage because that's mm -hmm. a lot of the people that watch this show pride me on my, I mean, uh, compliment me on my humility. And so I'm going to blow that myth out of the water right now. Um, I hate it when when hack guitar players try to play with distortion. It hurts my ears so badly. I think it's I think it's reduced my effectiveness as an engineer over the years by about fifty yeah. percent. Like like how do you saw? I, I, I guess you don't mix, so you don't get this. But yeah. you know what I'm saying when it just sounds like somebody. Opened up a coffee can, emptied out the coffee, got about three million bees, <laughs> put it in the coffee can, and set a mic on top of it. Just in the it's like, it's like, how do you avoid that? Well, I think people traditionally like assume like more distortion is more aggressive and, and bigger, and, and it's kind of not. Like it, it's funny when you go back and listen to. 
I mean, big guitars, like ACDC sounds like it's big guitars. It's not hugely distorted guitars. They're really good recorded guitars. That's just Malcolm with and, the best right hand ever. I mean, He's the one playing all those rhythm yeah, parts. Yeah, they're not, they're not pinned with massive distortion. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds heavier to anything I hear, you know? I mean, it sounds massive and huge. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I want to ask you this. Do you double your guitars? Or 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 do you, do you yeah. do like one pass? Uh, you, you do one pass, put that hard right, another pass, do that hard left. Yeah. Is that, is that well, what you're doing on the NERD stuff? Well, NERD NERD is treated a lot is treated a lot different. Like, okay. well, let's say typically then. Typically, okay. So, for instance, I was in with Rodney recently, mm -hmm. and um, we're sitting there. I did uh, some. It wasn't needed. Didn't need a lot of stuff in the verse. Chorus comes around and it kind of it could go one of two ways it can go in that super pop thing where you go a double left right low guitar double left right high guitar and you know maybe something in the middle you know which is like your standard but Rodney and I right away we listened back and we both looked at each other and go it's got to be one guitar because mm. today it's one guitar so a and year then, from now we, it might be different you know? when you treated that did you pan, pan a little bit of that one guitar to the left hard or? right hard left yeah oh, so one guitar but you did two tra two passes yeah okay yeah. one part two passes yeah typically a lot of times especially if it's pop pop rock kind of stuff radio it might be a left right you know, but right now it's kind of thinning out. The, the style of yeah. today is is a little bit thinning and, out. And for a pop record, once you get the high guitars left and right and the low guitars left and right, yeah. how, what effects, how do you treat them? How do you think about the effects? At this point today, I'll be thinning them out quite a bit. You know, I, they, it seems like stylistically, again, I'll, I'll try to thin them out. Even with NERD, I thin, kind of thin them out effects wise. Low end wise. Oh, you low start, end wise. just start shelving off a lot of that low end. Do you end. use like a. Like um, Andy Wallace, like a, Andy uses like the PCM42 a lot for, for delays and stuff. Do you, do you use like a delay no, on your guitar? No, if I do any delays, or any delays would definitely be in the box for me. Um, unless it's an effecty delay that I'm printing, that'd be like a line six. Then I'll, I'll print with something like that. Well, do you tend to use like a, like 30, 40, 50 milliseconds, or you use like real quarter, no, 16th, eighth, and those delays? I, I kind of, no. I would be, it would be like, yeah, eighth note, sixteenth note delays, oh, okay, I guess, so. yeah. But um, f one, of the, one of the main tricks I always do on guitars, honestly, is, is the, the pitch blender kind of trick, you mm -hmm. know? I always, mm -hmm. and you probably saw it on the weirdo mm -hmm. thing, I'm always sending a little bit of that. One, the first time I heard that, I was like, oh, okay, Lord, i It reminds me of, the, it, of the, the old 910 trick. So yeah, exactly. That's, it's where the whole I, that's why I started the Eventide 910, that's yeah. which I still use. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do that a lot. But if it's panning, yeah, it's hard left, hard right, doubled exactly, it, you know. So you're not, you're not afraid of, of, of like two or three cents up on one side and two or three cents down pitch on the other side? No, I'll, yeah, I'll even, I'll, my setting will usually even be like seven or so on each side. You oh, know? seven cents yeah, on each just side, that's, that's and drastic. Just bring it up, yeah, yeah. I guess so. not for a guitar though, because yeah, vibrato guitar. has much more yeah pitch movement than that yeah so I, I typically that's pretty much on all of them you know NERD might be different and with, with NERD now dealing with like stuff in NERD where it's like it's more of like NERD is more your your statement your artistic mm -hmm. it's a blast you know I mm -hmm. love playing you, all you have more freedom and yeah. more flexibility to do what you by the do. way yeah. uh, let, me, yeah. let me let me let me interject this you guys uh, NERD has done four albums now if I'm counting correctly mm -hmm. and um I'm telling you, you should you should go buy them. There, um, whether you're a guitar player or not, it, it's it, the thing about those records is you get to see some of the most creative people ever in our in the history of our our industry. Just not worrying about sales, not worrying about what the mm -hmm. record company thinks, not worrying about what their girlfriend thinks, not worry about their friends think. They're just going in and making some of the most creative music and records you'll ever hear since Dallas Austin's Highland Place Mobsters. Mm -hmm. uh, this is it's incredible stuff and it's just straight from the heart. It's, it's pure talent and Chad and Pharrell and all the guys involved um, uh, from, from Brent on down to the engineers. Um, what's, what's the, Drew, what's Drew, his, Drew, Drew is engineer, yeah, gifted, gifted guy. Shout out to amazing. Drew. Yeah. Um, 
Man, it's just records. it's they're just statement great records. records. Yeah. Statement but records. You, if you Definitely. love the art of music, yeah, you got to listen to those and just where the education takes you, go with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and those, and those are records which which are more rare these days. Those are records you would get lost in yeah. and discover more and more every time you listen. You could put them away, yeah, come back, time. and there's more stuff you. Yeah. As a matter of fact, as we get into the guest segment, here's a better transition to the graphic. Can I just hear the riff to lap, to lap dance? <laughs> and lap we'll, dance is my favorite in an NERD, NERD record. record sexy as hell. Play that lick. I just got that. Yeah. yeah. It's bad as Andrew. It sure is. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, more. It's Give me some more. Give me some more. Do the whole song. You got the, the rock star one there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> smoking, smoking. I'm mixing. I'm mixing. mixing I can't genres. wait to hear what he did on Drew's track for the for the yeah. mix fest session. Yeah. That's gonna be really cool. Yeah. Uh, man, that's listen. I, oh man, did I leave anything out, Brent? Uh, we, we'll, if I did, we'll cover you're, it in the next you're segment. In the guest segment. segment. You're well, in no, it now. Um, let's let's go to. Um, Where are you from? North Dakota, Grand Forks. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We were at, at yeah. one point yeah. time neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Canadians can have snowball other. fights with North Dakota people. Absolutely. And when did you come out here? Uh, I've been out here for about seven years. I was oh, okay. in North Dakota, Minneapolis for about ten years with Spy Mob, oh, okay. and then and then here. It happened then pretty quickly when you got here. You kind of yeah. rolled into because well, we, I was I was doing the uh, NERD stuff in Minneapolis. When we were oh. In Minneapolis. Yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. I so got Spy you. Mob, Spy Mob started in Minneapolis. I see. Got of, it. Yeah. Got it. Oh, yeah. cool. So, yeah. Cool. 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 His, his band Spy, Spy Mob was signed to Epic in '93, mm -hmm. and. Um, they got dropped. Not 90, 99. We got dropped, and then Pharrell picked us. Pharrell, Pharrell picked got us signed, and when he, get, when he went to, to talk to the A&R guy, I know the story better than you do. Yeah, uh, and when he went and talked to the A&R girl, he said, you know, the reason I'm here is because of Spy Mob. That's my favorite band ever. And she had to go, uh, I, I just dropped them. <laughs> so he said, oh, great, I'll sign them. Uh, and and they, they, were, they were Pharrell's band. I mean, that was I NERD. I mean, they toured. They play. They opened for David Bowie. They opened yeah. for the Peas. They opened mm. for. Um, that was the uh, Virgin. Uh, uh, it was well, epic. Spy Mob was Epic. Yeah, the right. first label. But NERDs. And then right. NERD was Atlantic. Was it? Oh, that's yeah. right. It was Atlantic. Or wait, no, it was. It doesn't matter. It was just good. <laughs> just find the record. Star Trek. You know. Got gotcha. you. Right. Exactly. Star Trek. Exactly. Exactly. But man, what a great story. Yeah. I mean, Isn't that a crazy story? Yeah. Our lawyer called us. He's like, you would never believe what happened. Do you guys know Pharrell? And we're like, oh my gosh, you're just tripping. But Pharrell up. actually had their record before he got signed, oh, yeah, and that's cool. what led him to make the deal with Epic. That's how good yep. these guys are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you you made a statement once um, that when you were in you were in the seventh grade, you said, and I was there when he did this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> he was your teacher. This, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm quitting sports. I'm quitting everything. Uh, if I don't make it in music, I don't have a backup plan. Yeah. I think it's that kind of no net, yeah. no no safety, no nothing approach that you have to have to make it. Now, I don't want everybody out there to go quit college and say to your parents, Dave said I should quit college. But those of you that, that know, you know. And you knew. Yeah. I knew, I don't know, I knew some, I, I don't know, I picked up a guitar and it was just like literally I knew. It was that day mm -hmm. I knew, and it just didn't change. I did. I quit sports and just became like a massive practicing guitar player, mm -hmm. you know, hours and hours a day, mm -hmm. you know. Did that start in high school? Did you know? and that started, yeah, jun uh, junior high. Oh, yeah. so it was 11 and then all the way through high school, yeah, I was yeah. in bands at like eighth grade. I, I think it shows know? itself that early. Yeah, yeah. Of so it, it, it comes out yeah. you know, pretty quickly. Yeah, and we're, you know. Mm -hmm. like, like I try to explain in the mixing side, Guys like Brent get good not because they practice, but because they can't help but practice. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not. It's not. You don't look at it as practice. You just look at it as I got to play. Absolutely. And so you always yeah. have a guitar in your hand. The way you get good at, at mixing, producing, writing, is you just do it. When you wake up in the morning and you think, "Wow, 
I'd like to run down to the mall and maybe get a cup of coffee, then you're not a mixer or a guitar player. When you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is reach for the guitar, mm -hmm. you play until your bat bladder's about to explode, then you go pee, then you go eat food, then, then you know that's what you're gonna be. It takes that kind of dedication, mm -hmm. you know. I'm sorry, sorry to get off on a tangent on you guys, but, but that is true. I just that respect is true. that passion, have so much yeah. respect for guys that, that just no safety net. If, if it don't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. You have to. You have to. I know. You like. You meet a lot of. I. I mean. I work with a lot of artists. You know, even in the writing and producing mm -hmm. stuff that I do. It's like some of the artists come in and they're just waiting for the record label to come save them. You're like, dude, it's not bad gonna idea. like bad idea. Bad idea. You know. Uh, let me say this to you guys because you guys, you guys give me the respect to listen to what I say. Now, what I'm saying is that's if you want that as your career. Now, now if you, there's other degrees. If you just want to be good at something and, and you want to approach it not full time, uh, it, you don't have to be that way. I'm talking about that, that person that wants to do that and only that, no matter what. But you can still be great and you can still be good at something, but, but the point to take from this is that it takes time. You just gotta put the time in. Uh, I wish you could watch three episodes and be as good as me or Bryn or, or Herb or, well, not Drew, but um, it's just not going to happen. It takes time. Even if you're just doing this and learning engineering to be a better mixer or a better producer, it just, it's just going to take time. So we can save you a little time, but we can't cut it all out. Mm -hmm. um, I was fascinated when you described the, the process of recording Katy Perry's new record, yeah. she ha she was pretty hands on, huh? She was hands on. She definitely was. She's she's impressive. Like, um, I think you know sometimes people don't give like someone like Katy the respect that she you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But she's working it. She says, you know, tells Tricky I want guitar on this. Tricky calls me thanks to uh, Anna Kute to mm -hmm. Chris, mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> and Chris is our guy. Yeah, and and says you know I want to be in the studio with the guitar player as he's tracking, mm -hmm. and she, she's got instinct. You know, she's like I think we need something here, and she plays a little guitar so she can do some explaining oh, I know of that. it. Yeah, she plays a little bit so mm -hmm. she can explain a little bit, but she'll say something open and give it balls and you know and very you oh, you, cool. you imagine Kate the way Katie you think she is she's mm -hmm. like that just come on give it some balls and, uh, you know yep. so she's in given like a lot of ideas and on the uh, which song did you, you Rodney did a song for Britney that you played Britney Spears that you played guitar yeah. on that was uh, uh, there was there was um, it was uh, on Britney's you know you got to forgive me I you know, know I, I, I just do a I blank do that, I leave, I I leave the song. studio and I'm like what was that song it'll, it'll, it'll come to us it'll come to us yeah. before the show's over uh, how's Rod you know Rodney's one of my favorites Rodney's I've known Rodney since he's yeah. yeah. Since he first came to LA, he's one of my favorites. He's, he's, he's pretty too. easy to work with. Isn't Rodney's he? a blast to work with. Rodney's he's a so blast. Creative. He's very creative. He he comes up. Sometimes I go in there and and <clears throat> I got you know he'll tell me to just do something or sometimes I go in there and he'll have the guitar part written, you know, with like a keyboard mm. and and I'm like sitting there going. It's same with him and Pharrell. Sometimes I'm just going like. Wow, you wrote that freaking guitar part! Like, Ooh. it's amazing. As a guitar you know? player, I hate to play guitar parts written on keyboard. Well, mostly I can't. That's that's a thing. <laughs> like, I, uh, the guitar is tuned in force, and the keyboard is just yeah. like they can play these real tight intervals, and I can't play those on guitar. Well, one of my one of my one of the songs I played I played on a song um, called Quicksand by Ryan Leslie, which is an incredible song. Ryan sent me the whole session. I opened it up. I'm like, how am I going to make this sound better? Like I'm, you know, mm -hmm. but it was that situation where the chords, I had to comp the chords, but they're too spread out. And, it, it, and if I changed it, mm -hmm. it, it screwed it up. So what I um, ended up doing was doing it in two passes. So if I'm doing a, you know, a F mon, you know, I might do, I might do this part of it and then that oh, part, okay. that, that part on a different track, you know? Mm -hmm. So if it's, I might play on the next pat pass and put them together, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of like double it and put it together to make it That's do the cool. same voice. Because they'll, they'll hear it, it's funny, you'll get, if, if not, Ryan would have called me back and been like, the voicing's wrong, you know? Mm. Like I have to get the voicing right, mm. you know? I don't know what made me think of this, just bitch slap me at any point in time during this question, but Bad Boy for Life, Puffy, was that a, was that a sample or was that a live part? I don't know, but it's banging, right? Wasn't that the that coolest part the ever? Coolest that I is love so that track. Cool. It's so out of time, but it's the feel. It's just dripping with yeah. feel. It's got to be a sample, Who right? Who did that one? I don't know. I don't know why that just popped into my head when you That's did that. Such Dave Navarro was on the video, but I don't know if he was on 
know if he played it though. I don't know. It sounds like it's a sample. It doesn't, doesn't sound it? like Dave Navarro. Yeah. It's uh, it's really cool. Yeah. So, um, when you're working with with Nerd and Pharrell, mm -hmm. um, I was impressed when I, was, I, I worked with Pharrell uh, a, a few months back on some Shakira stuff. I was pretty impressed with. Uh, a lot of guys that are tra traditionally thought of as urban guys don't mm -hmm. understand guitar in terms of, you know, uh, how can I say it? I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but they didn't grow up listening to a lot of guitar, so they, they tend mm -hmm. to not be uh, authentic with some of their approaches to the guitar. But I, was, I always thought Pharrell kind of, he grew up listening to guitars because he just yeah. always had such a, I mean, a a clear vision of... of well, his taste is so he is, broad. He I mean, is, man... You can't even put him in a category. He's so opinion. deep. That guy is yeah. like, his taste... Chad, in too. What, oh, oh, no uh, yeah, oh, no yeah, don't... Like, yeah, no both no those guys Absolutely. are so mm -hmm. musically deep in what they listen to and... And you know, look, Pharrell will, Pharrell knows Steely Dan and all that. Like that's right. the funny thing with like mm -hmm. urban kids that come in and don't get this stuff, and it's like, but like Pharrell gets all this. Did you say 70s. something about if Steely Dan is like driving down Ventura Boulevard or Sunset Boulevard towards mm -hmm. the ocean, then the Neptunes is like. Yeah, taking yeah. a Saturn rocket to the moon or yeah, something. What was, yeah. what was that called, quote? What did I, I say? So that was really cool. I like that. I can't remember. I think I quoted that. In, but yeah, I was like, like I can't remember what it was. I can't right? either. I, but it yeah. was real cool. Yeah. Just Google uh, Brent Paschke, P-A-S-C-H-K-E, and, and it'll come up early. Um, um, in terms of, 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 of your... Um, um, all the hats you wear because you're, mm. you're an excellent writer, excellent producer, Thank excellent you. guitar player. Yeah. Is 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 the guitar in terms of playing guitar in terms of composing? Is it is it a liability or is it an asset? Because I, I notice that guitar yeah. players tend to compose one way, and and keyboard players compose another. Yeah. And the keyboard kind of composition in pop world is a little more accepted whereas in the in the rock side obviously the yeah. guitar is is you know keith keith richards isn't going to compose on a piano but it, do you find it a hindrance in terms of your production sometimes sometimes because like i think i think so quickly i mean obviously you use whatever you're best at to try to get your ideas out and mm -hmm. guitar i can just my ideas can flow so quickly right. keyboards i'm like going like a major set you know i'm, yeah. I'm trying to like think think about it so it is a little bit, but the good thing is, is I have I have a pretty in-depth theory background too. So at least I can like, if I'm sitting there and I have to figure something out on keyboards, I can come to guitar and go, oh yeah, it's the mm -hmm. this has got to be a major seven or a yeah. blah, you know. It's hard uh, cause not being a, a very good keyboard player. It's hard for me to translate chords to guitar because I, I, I don't. You can't translate them literally. You just kind of yeah. have to translate them based on experience. Yeah. Um, one of the things about mixing i hate mixing sometimes alone because I, I can't tell if an idea is good or not you know and, and sometimes my best ideas i erase and sometimes my worst ideas i keep and when i uh, when i produce and i'm playing guitar on my own productions i can't i, I just have to I just have to turn it over to a third party and say I trust you because yeah. I can't I can't produce myself on guitar. You seem to be able to do that. I, I can. Um, you know, look, there's nothing I enjoy more than like somebody like Drew Coleman. Like he's he's definitely my favorite engineer to work mm -hmm. with. Guitar player. I mean, we just it's like that's Pharrell's, mm -hmm. and I can definitely I can literally just sit there and Drew will grab the right the right bar or the right mm -hmm. four four mm -hmm. bars or whatever. Um, but if not, I've gotten pretty good at like, you know, if I go to places where a lot of times I'll have to, I just go in and track and the engineer pops out of the chair and I start editing, you know, and just, I've gotten used what to it. What happens with know? me is, is, is the simple stuff I tend to not keep. I tend to keep the stuff that's difficult and that's not the yeah, best yeah. way to be as a producer, which I'd never do if somebody else was playing it. But when yeah. I play it, I like to. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you need time to stretch for batter's box? You want to? Yeah, I'm ready. You you lose. You want. Uh, let me let me go. Let me go. This. He's got to throw his pitches. Uh, okay, yeah. I got to get him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm I'm ready. All right. Okay. Then uh, there's the graphic rolling up. It's batter's box time, and the pitcher is Dave Hard Drive Pizzato. Uh, Brent. Uh, 
in keeping with our guitar theme today, I'm going to ask you your go-to uh, effect on good for guitar. And let's just jump right in. Yeah. Phase. Uh, MXR Phase 90 script logo. Got to be vintage. Or the orange one. Yep. Chorus. Uh, I'd probably go in the box. I might go sound toys. Might do something in the box. Plug, plug in. That was me. Sound toys. Okay, in case they didn't hear you, the phase was the MXR. MXR script logo, phase 90. Chorus, sound toys. Sound toys or some, something in the block, box. Okay, um, delay. Uh, in the box it would be line six, uh, Echo Farm. Oh, Echo Farm. Yep. A flan flanger. Uh, I don't use, don't use much flanger. By the way, um, this is an aside. UAD just sent me a flanger yesterday that's incredible. Uh, Wawa pedal. Uh, Buddha, the purple Buddha. Wah wah pedal. Love is it similar to the old Hammond like, uh, box? You know, just the oh, wow. the old oh, like. It's like a box, so I bet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, envelope follower. Um, that cheap uh, old uh, deal is it DOD? The two knob kind of. The green one. Green one, yeah. Yeah, it's not DOD. It's some uh, tech, isn't it? No, I think it's DOD. Is it DOD? I can't remember. It's in my. Yeah, I use that on a lot of bases. I use that on the base on. Uh, a lot of songs. I love it. You have to have the setting just right. Yeah, you do. Definitely. Um, reverb. Box. TL space. Oh, wow. Yeah. Compressor. Uh, orange squeeze. It'd be Analog Man reissue of it. Oh. Analog Man makes uh, a lot uh, of nice uh, stuff. I, was just, I love that thing. That's just, yeah. that's just the, 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 oh, I love it. EQ. Uh, I don't EQ to, I don't use any EQ in the pedals. Wow. Just inside. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, like a uh, like if you need more gain, like to drive the front stage of an amp. Back to Zvex, uh, super hard on. I own serial number one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the woolly. You are a bitch. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I know. I got... <laughs> oh, we forgot distortion. Ah, uh, distortion. Uh, a few of them. Analog Man, modified 808. You know, pedal mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. those. Um, uh, what the Ibanez you, tube screen where you oh, show you that. I, yeah, that's the the, green one. the eight the modified one. Like I think I have like you know analog yeah. man like yeah. modifies them. You mm -hmm. know, um, uh, and then the Zvex Fuzz Factory is kind of my sound. That's Fuzz Factory is definitely my NERD. That's mm -hmm. my like mm -hmm. signature sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the woolly woolly man. Woolly. I got yeah. It's, woolly. It's, it's, whew, it, it, it's it crazy. puts some fur on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, man. I think he hit a home run. I, I think he hit several out the park. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Drew, you got some stuff over there? Some, I do, some I folks do. who have some questions? Let's, yeah, I got some questions. Let's tee up the time. corner office. These are live questions okay. from the chat cool. room. No graphic for me? That's there all. It oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, cool. <laughs> no graphic for me. <laughs> Some <laughs> bitch is pointing, we expecting we graphics. We another star. We might have to reel it back uh, in. <laughs> Brent, what, uh, from Mr. Easy Sunshine, what, what's the favorite song Brent did with Pharrell? What's the song that he keeps listening to, coming back to, thinking it was his best performance? Good what's, question. What's the, my favorite any, like Pharrell song? Yeah, I think you did with Pharrell. That I did, that um, it's off of the scene sounds. It's that song called You Know, you know What? It's uh, what number is that on the album? I can't remember what number yeah. it is. It's Glad it's the album. kind of the funky one. It's you know what you know what. Yeah. All right, we'll look it up. Also, um, <clears throat> good question, Drew. Uh, from Thomas Kobrick, um, I'd like to know when creating a rock guitar sound, are there frequency sweet spots you try you try to dial in for full Excellent meaty question. sound? Any yeah. processing mixing tricks for thickness? Um, you know, like yeah, if I'm if I'm too. thinking thickness thickness, uh, like there will be a couple plugs. Like I'll, I'll go to Poltec. I'll kind of go to that standard. Like what has always worked. So like thickness and thickening up things. That's my first go to, and that usually. What was the first works. half of that question? Because I like that too. It said uh, when creating a rock guitar sound, are there frequency su uh, yeah. frequency sweet spots? And I don't know. Well, I, well he I'm said he, always... he said earlier he doesn't tend to EQ. Yeah. So so he he gets the sound. Other ways than through frequency. Yeah. Um, I'll EQ in there, but not to, to tape. I, partially, I don't have an EQ to EQ to tape. Yeah. If I did, I probably go would back know. and check out the. I think it's either the Joe Barisa or the Eric Valentine episode where they talked about using the Helios EQ All right. to that guy. All right. Sounds good. Um, we got time for one more. We got time for two more. Okay. 
Uh, from Leo Saramago. Sorry if I said that wrong. Leo, right. oh, what's oh. up? Uh, Leo's our boy. We have, we got. We have friends. Uh, yes. we know. Leo. Brent, how many takes does it take for you on average to, to play something? Four or five or so, you know, kind of get warmed up to it. and Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take too long usually. That's not for him to play it right. That's for him to come up with the part. And that, uh, that the producer wants. Yeah, I guess it's two Rent's different the first things. Take like, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, sometimes in coming up with a part and figuring out what they want. Yeah, it, it, it just depends. Like a lot of times it's, it's too, it's like I, I have to be careful if it's, I can't have too much of me in there. I'm not like one of those guys that needs a ton of my guitar. If I, if I have a ton of my guitar, I'm, I'm pushing way ahead of the beat, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I need to, I need I to make sure to, kick and that. snare is like, there, on stage, I, I like to hear myself blazing, but in, in the studio, I like to I, be in the track. I gotta kind of be in there, or else I'll be just all over it. Okay, you know? good to know. Yeah. Um, all right, last one uh, from Mark Tarleton. Uh, for our audience that's kind of up and comers, what are good cheap recording amps? I love my small box Pathfinder, but what are some other ones? I, I mean, again, I would go back to plugins. plugins. It's, yeah, I definitely go back to just grab a, a grip of plugins. I'd start with Eleven. That's like the my favorite. And yeah. but there's there's a lot. Waves. Makes I like it great. The Waves guitar. Waves guitar is great. I like great. that plugin a lot. Native Instruments, that new Ramfire one yeah. for heavy sounds is really great. The box, he said. Ask him, uh, is that the little white one? That's about what was his name? Mark. Mark, was, uh, the Vox, is that the little white one that's about this big, little white Vox? I've got that amp. That's a screaming little yeah. amp. Mm. I just think it, recording live amps right now to get them right, you're, you're, like, you're so deep into like your expensive mic pre, you got to, I, I feel like you need a 121, a Royer, and then a, something else on there, like a 409 or something. Yeah. So, like at that point, you're, you and what you end all, up with is an old sound. Yeah, yeah, and you could have bought all the guitar plugins out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it, you know. It depends. I guess. I guess I should be fair. It depends on what type of record you're trying to make. Yeah, that if too. If you're yeah. trying to make a pop record as opposed to an authentic um, kind of rock record. Yeah. I, I've got two questions for you. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah. First of all, did you have a good time? Yes, this was a blast. But you'll come back. Yes. This definitely is actually the third will. question, I mean, yeah. and and the third part of the question is. Will you play us out while we say goodbye? Yeah, man. Just just jam and we'll, we'll talk about it. I, really quickly, um, thanks to Brent. This is so cool. Um, and we're going to be doing more of these kinds of things. You got all the MixFest information. Get to the website. Get to the other stuff. It's November 12th. Um, thanks for all the stuff that's coming. And you know where to reach us. We'll get back to you. Replay the show if you need more information. Dave, why don't you take us home? Okay, hold on. I, I, I need a shot of me, Will. There we go. Standing ovation. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Take us home, David. I don't know. What, what do I do? Say, say goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Nice plan. Thank All you, right. guys. Hey, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to leave you with this and that we're talking about guitars. I want you to go listen to uh, some of the younger guys out right now. Joe Bonamasso, Kenny Wayne Shepard, uh, Butch Trucks uh, from the Almond Brothers. He's one of the drummer's son. Uh, Anthony Gomez. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs and Stone Foxes. And? And, and, and oh, look at him, yeah. overdubbing on his little pedal there. I'm gonna shut up for a second. <laughs> let, let that play, let that go ahead, go ahead. Start doing those, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Let's say well, guys, um, don't forget to check check out the Mix Fest. What's going on there? That that that's something you might want to want to want to be a part of. I think it's gonna be a special night, Let's special get afternoon. To mix, to get to mix to something uh, brand new. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you so much. Super thanks to Brent. He's, he's been a friend and always always uh, been there for us when we needed him. He came through today again. And Herb, good to see you again. Good to see you too, man. Uh, shout out to Will, who worked his ass off getting the new studio ready for today. Thanks, Will. And um, Drew and I had a good week. We got a lot done. So we'll see you next week.